Hello, I'm going to discuss and demonstrate wave motion. Here I have a diagram of a, of a long rope here with some waves traveling along that rope. And the wave speed is how fast the wave travels along the rope. I designated here a little vector here showing the wave speed. That's how fast it travels. Uh, the frequency is the number of vibrations per second. So whatever is uh, wiggling this to make the waves, to generate the waves, it'll be wiggling or vibrating so many times per second. The frequency is the number of oscillations or vibrations per second. And then uh, the wavelength is the distance between two similar points, such as from crest to crest is a wavelength, or from trough to trough is also a wavelength, distance between two similar points. And the amplitude of the wave is the displacement from the equilibrium position. Here the rope is at its neutral position, and here the rope is at this point at maximum displacement. The distance between the top of the wave and the center part, that distance is called the amplitude. The relationship among the various parameters, frequency, wavelength, and speed is given by this simple equation. The speed is simply equal to the frequency multiplied by the wavelength, and that's valid for all types of waves. Now I'd like to demonstrate uh, wave motion with the aid of this rope. It's actually a rubber cord. We could call it a rope or a string. Uh, and I want to uh, just lay that on the floor there so that uh, we don't get confused by reflecting waves coming back. We'll get to that here shortly. But let me just send a single wave along, along that rope in that fashion. So the wave propagates along. It has a certain speed. And uh, it... Uh, will have a certain speed depending upon the conditions of the rope, the tension and the weight and so on. But the wave has a certain speed that it propagates along. Now, if I send multiple waves, one after the other, then frequency and wavelength begin to have meaning. The frequency will be the number of oscillations per second, and the wavelength will be the distance between, say, adjacent crests of the wave. So there as the wave travels along. It has a certain speed, has a certain frequency, and a certain wavelength. And the relationship among those variables is given by the equation we just discussed. Now, if I go to a uh, higher frequency, then that will result in a shorter wavelength. If I go to a lower frequency, fewer vibrations per second, that results in a longer wavelength. It's kind of difficult to see that because of some reflections that take place at the end. But let me go ahead and uh, make use of those reflections now by picking the rope up off the floor. Now I'd like to demonstrate a, a, uh, a wave that, uh, that travels down. And notice when it travels down, it travels down on the chalkboard side and reflects back on the uh, opposite side. So it travels down on the chalkboard side, reflects back on the class side. I'm going to let the wave go all the way down, come all the way back, and then I'm going to send another wave down and back. I'm going to try to hold my hand pretty much fixed here as I send that wave down and let it reflect back. Down and back, down and back, and then I'll send another one down. As it goes down and comes back, I send another one down, and it looks like what's happening now is that it's just vibrating back and forth, and in a sense it is. We call that a standing wave. Turns out that there's a fixed point at my hand, relatively fixed, and a fixed point at the wall, and a maximum vibration point in the middle. We call those fixed points nodes. The maximum vibration point we call an antinode. Next, I'd like to send a wave all the way down. And just as the wave hits the end, then I'll send a second wave down. The first wave will go down, reflect back on the class side. The second wave will go down on the chalkboard side. And we'll see what happens when those two waves meet in the middle. They'll cancel out. And then I'll try to do this smoothly so that we have a wave going in one direction. At the same time, we have another wave going in the opposite direction. And we see at the center they cancel. 
That's what causes that note, a relatively quiet point. And there's a, a note at my hand where it reflects off and a note at the wall. And the spacing of the notes is half the length of the rope. In this case, the wavelength is the full length of the rope and the nodal spacing is a half a wavelength. So the nodes are spaced at the half wavelength points. Similarly, the anti-nodes, the points of maximum vibration, which would be, uh, let's try to get this set up again here. The anti-nodes, the points of maximum vibration, those anti-node points are spaced one half wavelength apart as well. So the distance from node to node is a half wavelength, and the distance from anti-node to anti-node is a half wavelength. Therefore, the distance from anti-node to the adjacent node would be half of that distance or a quarter of a wavelength. So a wave goes all the way down and reflects back when the next wave starts and they cancel at the center. Now if I go to a higher frequency still, I have to move my hand more, vib more times per second. The higher frequency, more vibrations per second. The wavelength is going to be shorter. And I'm going to send a train of waves down and let that train of waves reflect through uh, the next train of waves that I send down. So I'll send a train of waves down and we'll let that train of waves reflect in such a way that I have waves traveling in one direction and the other at the same time. It's easier to do this in a circular fashion and we can see that we get uh, uh, again standing waves, this time a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength. The higher the frequency the shorter the wavelength. But again the spacing of the nodes is a half wavelength, spacing of anti-nodes is a half wavelength, node to adjacent anti-node is a quarter wavelength. Higher frequency still would result in still a shorter wavelength and therefore a shorter spacing between nodes and anti-nodes. And again, it's easier to do it in a circular fashion, but we won't take time to count those, but you get the idea. Waves are passing back and forth through one another in such a way that they cancel at the nodal points and uh, do not cancel at the anode points. So we have maximum vibration points and minimum vibration points, wave motion.